in Jesus name we pray amen you can be seated we are considering God's gifts and favors for a holy youth God's gift gifts and favors for a holy youth in the book of Genesis chapter 15 verse 1 the Bible says after these things the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision saying fear not Abram I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward Abraham don't be afraid I am your protection I am your defense and I am your exceeding great reward he has called Abraham from a world of human greatness and he had told Abraham leave the society of men that you're familiar with I am taking you to another society I am taking you to another environment and there I am going to make you great there I am going to bless you there I'm going to make your name great there and now Abraham left the society of men where he lived where human greatness was being was seen he now left to a land of God if to be great requires living in a society that is familiar where people know you they knew you yesterday they come to know you today I said, ah, this is a great man. We know him. That seemed to comfort the man. It seemed to act more pleasure to him. But the Lord says, leave that society. My greatness is another way. Uh, you will come and see it. I say it, I will make you great. I say I will make your name great. I say that by you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So, Abraham lived. Now, see him saying, Abraham, don't look to yourself. Don't look to your environment now. Because if you look at yourself, you have no child. You, are, you, 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 you feel, oh, who am I? I have no child. Abraham, don't bother about that. I say, I, God, I am your, your shield, your defense. Although you're living in a strange society, don't fear whatever will happen there because I will take care of you very well. I will protect you very well. And to Abraham, I, God, will reward you. I am your reward. Now, why is he saying this? He has taken you. He has told you, leave that society of sin. Leave the society of evil. Leave the society of pollution. Leave that society and come to another world. The kingdom of God. The kingdom of righteousness. The kingdom of peace. Kingdom of holiness. Leave those places and come. Avoid all those fraudulent life. Evil success. Come here and I will make you great. I will bless you. I am your blessing. Why? Some of you think when you come to Christ that you become poor. You cannot achieve your vision anymore. You say, I want to be the president. I want to be a senator. I want to be a governor more than that. In fact, I want to be a professor of learning. I want to be like this. I want to do this. So you think that God has emptied you of those things. He has God, God, which reward do we have? What reward do we have? Just like Abraham was answering God and verse 2 and Abraham said, oh, oh Lord God, 
Lord God, what will thou give me seeing I go childless? Can you see that? The Lord is saying, come, I will make you great. You're complaining that now, God, I am empty. In fact, I've lost my certificate because I cheated with it. I was making advance. I would have gotten first degree now, but because of it, I have to do restitution. I have, in fact, what I am nothing. I've, I've lost everything. I don't have hope. My parents are refusing me. My brother is saying because of this righteousness, he will not take care of me. My father is not bothering about me anymore. My mother is even engaged me because of this dressing. Because they are saying, how can I marry? How will you marry with this type of life? It, they have discarded at me god is saying that he is your reward god is saying that he is your reward the creator of life the maker of the universe the one that made the sun that made the moon the man the one that made the ocean and the fish in it the one that made human beings of all races raised up himself and said i am your reward that's why don't bother about anything don't bother about what you lack there is a better tomorrow there is a brighter tomorrow there is a greater tomorrow there is a, a glorious tomorrow it shall happen to your life it shall happen to your life it shall happen to your life it shall happen in the name of Jesus that's what the Lord is saying yes there is a great reward in serving the lord both by adult believer and by you god presents himself as our reward the scripture calls him the rewarder god is called the rewarder of them that serve him diligently meaning in bible days and today including myself speaking enjoy divine gifts and graces divine favor from God in our daily life and yearly living because of commitment to the life of righteousness and holiness I want to tell you that's the life that has the blessed reward most important reward yes lasting reward I lead in the way of righteousness that I may cause them that love me to inherit treasures to inherit treasures to inherit treasures if the people that are sitting here are the people that are following jesus they are the people that are following righteousness then i am seeing the people that are, shall inherit the treasures of this world they shall inherit the prosperity of this world i am seeing the people that will experience true greatness in life yes that's what the god of heaven promised yes that's god god is not a liar god is not the son of man that he shall lie he's telling you, you have a bright future the creator is saying he will make every cell in your body to rejoice that you're serving him now let me tell you the rewarding principle in case you think it's automatic in case you think they don't write exams by God, that God doesn't give people exams before he rewards them. The world learn their principle from who? The world that give tests, give exam to people to make sure they pass before they promote them. To make sure they, they, they pass the interviews, the tests, they, before they shift them forward. So, God also has rewarding principle and watch it very well and submit to it and practice it and put your eyes on this so that your reward should be great in Proverbs chapter 3 verse 1 to verse 4 Proverbs chapter 3 verse 1 to verse 4 my son forget not my law but let thine heart keep my commandments for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee let not mercy and truth forsake thee 
Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Yes, rewarding principle. The child of God is here called to a life of mercy and truth. Mercy and truth is also called love and truth. See it in the New Testament addressed in the book of uh, Second John. Second John verse 1 to verse 4. Second John verse 1 to verse 4. The elder unto the elect lady and her children whom I love in the truth. It was mercy and truth. Now it is love and truth and not i only but also all they that have known the truth for the truth's sake which dwelleth in us and shall be with us forever grace be with you mercy and peace from god the father and from the lord jesus christ the son of the father in truth and law the old testament represented love with mercy here it is brought out with for love in, in verse 4 i rejoice greatly that i found of thy children walking in truth as we have received from the father i rejoice greatly and in verse 5 and now i beseech you lady not as though i wrote a new commandment unto you but that but that which we had from the beginning that we love one another mercy and truth god says bind this upon your neck hold fast to these two things mercy and truth they summarize the christian principle of a rewarding life and it is called love and truth yes love love stated here involves both love for god and for fellow men as stated by the lord jesus hold to love hold tightly to love in the book of mark chapter 12 i read verse 30 and 31 mark chapter 12 verse 30 and 31 and thou shalt love the lord thy god with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength this is the first commandment and the second is like namely this thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself there is none other commandment greater than this hold love tightly love for god love for your brother love for god what does it mean by love for god if somebody loves god how does it show which way does it manifest the scripture tells us clearly that the life of law for god means the life of obedience to his word and commandments John chapter 14 verse 15 John chapter 14 verse 15 it says if ye love me keep my commandments if ye love me keep my commandments if you love Jesus keep his word and hold fast 
to the love of Jesus which means hold fast to the word of God hold fast to the obedience to God's commandment look at it again in verse 21 John chapter 14 verse 21 to verse 24 he that hath my commandments and keepeth them he it is that loveth me and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father and i will love him and will manifest myself to him can you see he that has my commandments and keeps them he it is that loves me he that loves me by keeping my commandments i will love him and i will come to him and reveal myself to him i will make appearances to him i will make my presence known unto him i will make him to feel me around that's what he's saying that's what jesus is saying death and the bible says let not this love for god leave you don't stop live loving god which means you don't commit immorality because when you go to commit immorality you don't you hate god you disdain god you despise god love for god means you don't tell lies when you tell lies and god is a god of truth when you tell lies you despise god say so who you see i will not hear him you disdain god it means don't join in evil don't practice witchcraft don't go back go collecting charms charms for success charms for greatness charms for whatever politics in the school politics in the society you don't do that because when you go to collect charm you have brought a second wife and god is a jealous god it's like you're marrying two wives and the first wife is jealous of that marriage is jealous of you and will not want you to share want to share your love with another woman so to marry and to bring satan god will not stay there god will not share your life with satan it means you hate him if a man brings a second wife in it shows that the first wife knows surely whatever he says with his mouth he hates her he does not have real love for her that's why he's going to bring another person to to join her in marriage whatever he's saying with his mouth is a lie and god says how do you say you love me why are you saying you love me you're singing my songs and you sing it very passionately as if you're filled with my love as if oh, i love god but you're immoral you're doing masturbation you tell lies you go out on witchcraft you do many evil things you cheat in the school you cheat in business you fight you do evil so how will you say you love me why call me lord lord and do not the things that i say you are singing my songs you are here see you walking up and down in the house of god and you say i love god and you tell people you give testimony of the love of god oh how passionate but you're not living righteous you're not a true man god says not all that god say unto me lord lord shall enter the kingdom of heaven but they that do the will of my father which is in heaven which means if you don't do the will of god all you profess with your mouth is a lie they profess many things in their mouth but in life they are reprobates they are sinners so let not the, this genuine love leave you don't ever leave god to go and commit sin love god bind the love of god about you to the neck to the neck bind that love of god tightly around you use it as a bell tighten yourself with it to ensure that your trouser does not fall down your pants, as some people call it 
does not fall down that you hold tight hold tight to love hold tight to the love of god hold tight to the love of god may hold tight to obedience however hard the temptation however hard the anger there may be hunger you are so angry that you have to steal the whole time don't do it don't do it for god's sake for god's sake let not mercy forsake you bind it look at what he said again in verse 22 yes in john chapter 14 verse, two, um, verse 22 judas said unto him not iscariot lord how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world verse 23 jesus answered and said unto him if a man love me he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our abode with him he that loveth not beloved me not keepeth not my sayings and the word which ye hear is not mine but the father's which sent me so how are you saying you will love us how and what about the people in the world sinners don't you love them general love as you see near the human beings on the earth how are you how do you baba hello god does like that to them but passionate love fatherly love is for you who serve him that's what jesus now said if a man love me he will keep my ways as you are in this camp you will obey every word of god no stealing no fraudulent language no fighting not going to look into the nakedness of any girl lying down sitting down no 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 lusting not pursuing evil not never because you love god even the food that they're sharing you will not want to cheat on another person you don't, no you will not be because god is watching you he is seeing you therefore you will not want to do it you will not want to offend this great lover no you will not want to offend him so that is what it means that's because you love him then my father will love him and i will love him and we will come and stay with him god will stay with you that's what it means and remember he told abraham i am your reward i stay with you i am your sufficiency i am your all sufficiency so that is what he's saying one that loves god gives him first place in his life gives him worship glory and service you will worship him you will worship and serve him you will give him first place first before your yourself before your your father before your mother before your friend before your lecturer before your master in business you will give god first place in case you're married you will give god first place before your husband somebody i had somebody say you know my husband said i must not remove my attachment my husband said i must not remove my earring and you know the bible says we should obey our husband those people hate god they hate god god must be given first place because the disciples asked the sanhedrin judge in yourself shall we obey men rather than god shall we obey you rather than god judge it yourself as for us we will obey god can everybody say as for me i will obey god <laughs> say it again say it the third time you will obey him above your lecturer even when your lecturer says you can cheat i give you a chance then my god says no my god says don't do it no i your lecturer i say you can cheat you can carry your textbook inside the invigilator has said 
carry your books inside open and i am here he has been paid that's why he's talking like that he said no my god how can i do this thing and sin against god that's what joseph told potiphar's wife I, lie with me now i'm free for you. i love no it's wickedness i can't do that and sin against god i cannot do that and sin against god that's what god expects of you you love god yes it is that's what god wants you love for god is expressed in loving his world his work and his people yes loving his world i was glad when they say let's go to the house of god let's go for conference oh i will come and hear the world i will come and hear the preachers preach the world oh i love the world how i love your world it is my meditation all the day long your word was found and i did eat it it was in my mouth sweet as honey that's it that's a person who loves the lord he loves his world he loves the people of god moses would come and identify with the people of god because his mind was with the with god himself so but then it says let not mercy and truth forsake you let not love forsake you and if jesus tells us love is love for god and love for your neighbor and love for others is or love or mercy towards others manifest by loving and kind actions loving and kind relationship and interactions with them it is a life of patience forgiveness humility generosity benevolent service to me in the name of christ you deal gently because you love him you don't want to injure him just as you don't want to offend god you don't want to offend your brother you don't want to do ill to your brother because the bible says love do it not ill to his neighbor love does not do harm why do you want to do harm to your brother where do you want to abuse him where do you want to reduce him where, do, where are you hitting him where are you hindering his place come where do you want to deprive him of eternal life by causing him to lie with you sleep with me you are all pursuing him well, how much hatred actually do you have for that young man enterprising in Christ jumping in Christ he said I will, I will woo him to be my husband and you begin to pursue him and to open your nakedness and to make your breast touch his body this is wickedness this is evil it's wickedness that is not love you ah, i want to show you i love you no you want to show that you hate him because love does not do wickedness love does not remove somebody from the love of god love if you love your neighbor you will not want to remove him from the favor of god you love that girl he said ah, this girl is fine and i love her she hey, i love her the way she sings for god the way she does this and you want to spoil her you want to sleep with her make her pregnant so that her education should stop or to cause her to become a murderer when she becomes pregnant she goes to kill a human being because now you make her life worse you hate her you hate her how will you love you say you love your brother and you want to teach him homosexuality you want to pollute him that's hatred love do it no ill to his neighbor how will you poison somebody and say you love i i i i, I poison uh, you are you're poisoning somebody you're destroying him you are assassinating his character you're spoiling him before other people that's not love love do it no ill to his neighbor let not this love that does good that works patience that forgives that blesses others let not this character leave you bind it upon yourself to your neck hang it upon your body that you must always carry it about everywhere you go you're going with love 
That's what it says. Now, what about truth? Because let not mercy and truth forsake you. Rewarding principle. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Yeah, rewarding principle. What about that? What about that? What's the truth? And Paul was writing to the elect lady, I rejoice greatly to find your children walking in the truth by keeping the commandments of love, walk, living in love. What is this truth? Truth is the word of God. In the book of John chapter 14, John chapter 14 verse Sorry, chapter 17, verse 17. John 17, verse 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Truth, the word of God is truth. The word of God is the truth. The word of God is the sure truth. Tested truth approved truth so stand to the word of god a lie committed to truth is a life that hates lie and falsehood i have sworn okay i am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress i've made up my mouth my mouth shall not tell lie shall not speak falsehood my tongue shall not form evil, form deceits. It is, no, a person that loves the truth does not tell lies. Yes, no. It is a life that loves the word of God, believes and practices it, whether it be simple or hard. Some word of God is hard. Some people said to Jesus, it's a hard saying. Who can hear it? And they left and went. This is a hard saying. If you love God, love the word of God, love the truth, as hard as the restitution is, you will do it. As hard. It's going to reduce you, but you will do it. Because, no, I must, I, I must just do it to please God. I must do it to show that I'm a true child of God. You will do it. Oh, to remove all this earring. Ah, but how will I look when I remove earring? I will look like a monkey. I will look like a monkey. Let me remove it. Let me look like a monkey. I will keep the world. I'm going to remove all this jewelry, all this thing. When I remove trousers and well, we call it pants, what will happen to me? Let it happen. I will remove. Will my husband divorce me now? Let him divorce me. I love God above my husband and I love his truth and I will practice it. I will practice it at the expense of my marriage. I will practice it at the expense of my education. I will practice it at the expense of success in life, in business. I will practice it at the expense of my, li my life on earth. I will practice the truth. I will practice it. A man, Polycarp, was arrested at old age. And he said, deny Jesus. That Jesus is the truth. Deny him. He said, I have, no, I think he was one round ten or so that time. He said, I've served my Lord for 80 years. He have never seen fault in him. Is it at the time I'm about to see him now that I should be denying him? My people, you can kill me. Stand for this truth. Stand for it. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind it around your heart, around your life. Forsake. Let not it forsake. It means the God of grace can deny you. The God of truth can reject you. Don't come to that point that this God of truth should reject you because you're not qualified, you're not practicing, you're a hypocrite. Don't come to that point that God of mercy should reject you and no more show you mercy because he said, no, you're not serious. I won't waste my time upon you. Don't come to that point. Get all of God. Get all of righteousness. Get all of the truth. Get all of God. Die. Bind God around your neck. Die him everywhere. Hold fast to God. That's what the word of God is saying. A youth committed to Christ's truth does not tell lie, 
whatever may be the outcome he carries out all the doctrines of Christ without excusing one or the other the teaching on restitution Christian dressing and abstinence from worldly life and attires not marrying an unbeliever not cheating in school or workplace and adhering, uh, 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 adhering strictly to the law of God he observes all this he observes all this. He is a step higher than the rich man. The rich man came to Jesus and said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said, have you heard the commandment? Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt honor thy father and thy mother. Thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not do. He said, I have observed them from my youth. But then Jesus said, one thing remains. Go and sell all that you have. And don't go and keep it in the bank. Give it to the poor. And then come and follow me. It's too much. Let it not be too much for you. Let not the instruction of God be too much for you. Let not the commandment of God be too much for you. Perform everything God says. Everything. Perform it. Because the Lord will perform all his promises over your life. That's what we need to understand. Very, very important. Yes, a life committed to love and truth will surely obtain favor in the sight of God and by God's working also in the sight of men. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 4. Proverbs chapter 3, I read verse 4 so shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man yes Proverbs chapter 8 verse 34 and 35 Proverbs chapter 8 verse 34 and 35 Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. For whoso findeth me, findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. It's a principle of life that will give you divine favor. Yes, Proverbs, I mean Psalm 18, verse 20 to 26. Psalm 18, verse 20 to 26. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands, hath he recompensed me, for I have kept the ways of the Lord, and have not wickedly departed from my God, for all his judgments were before me, and I did, I did not put away the statutes, I mean his statutes from me. I was also upright before him. And I kept myself from my iniquity. Therefore hath the Lord recompensed me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands in his side with the merciful. Thou wilt show thyself merciful with an upright man. Thou wilt show thyself upright with the pure. Thou wilt show thyself pure. And with the forward, thou wilt show thyself forward. Can you see? God will come to you as you, according to the dictate of life you have given him. According to the cleanness of your life, favor will follow you. The goodness of the law shall come upon the righteous. You don't see him saying, We will, one, I am going to manifest myself unto you. I, Jesus, will make myself clear to your life. When I see you walking in righteousness, I will be attracted. You will be attracting me. I will come. I will make, myself, I'll make visitation on your life. I will visit you. I will come to you. I'll come. In fact, my father will love you. I will love you. We will come and stay with you. That's what he said. You will find favor. 
you will find protection you will find divine care because God himself has come onto your life you will rejoice the hearts of people too you will bless the hearts of people too for Paul said for John writing to the leg lady said I have no greater joy to find of my children walking in the truth the minister of the gospel will be happy I myself will be rejoicing that thank God these people the Lord has called to holiness revival movement they are sincere they are true when I hear your report from various states from various local governments various town cities village and various nations when I hear your report that this is what you're doing how you would stood in the examination how you will stood you will stood every, the policeman how you will stood this and will never give bride will never be corrupted when I hear of this what a joy I will be thanking God I've not labored in vain I've not wept in vain I've not done all these things struggled in vain I've not wasted my life in vain something actually is happening in the world revival is going on in the world revival is going on in the world Holy Ghost is moving around the world yes end time revival is moving and the fire is burning everywhere fire everywhere fire everywhere righteousness everywhere holiness everywhere it shall be a joy your leaders will be happy that the, now thank God you have called us to a lively ministry you have called us to a lively ministry we're seeing people changing actually we're seeing people obeying the Lord now testimonies of divine gifts and favor testimony of divine gifts and favor the Bible is full of accounts of righteous men and women who found grace in the sight of God because of the commitment to mercy and truth or love and truth we shall begin with the righteous and holy life of Jesus as a man we're studying him now as a man God but became man and put on complete property of man now we're going to see because of his righteousness what happened to him look at it in the book of Luke chapter 2 verse 52 and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man see it was not automatic Jesus had to qualify Jesus had to qualify in order to receive divine favor the same qualification in the realm of men mercy and truth so he began to increase because he attracted God and human beings who saw this gentle boy this nice boy this humble boy yes this obedient boy around them they were so happy with him he got favor in their side look at it in the book of Luke in John chapter 15 verse 10 John chapter 15 verse 10 if ye keep my commandments ye shall abide in my love even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love which way is Jesus different from the disciples in keeping commandments here I kept my father's commandment I kept not automatic I made up my mind to keep it I disciplined myself to keep it I observed his word to keep it I found his love I found his favor if ye also will keep my commandment you will find my favor you will find my love you will abide in my love 
Now, in the book of Hebrews, what reward did God give Jesus? Apart from that, he had given him a name above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven, of things on earth, and of things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So, apart from that, see it now in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 10. Hebrews chapter 1 now. Let's read from verse 8 rather. Verse 8 and 9. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 8 and 9. But unto the Son he said, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows which fellows as God in heaven did he have a fellow no it's one person but as a human being on earth what exalted Jesus above his fellows as a human being you love righteousness and you hate iniquity that made God your God to anoint you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. That made God to lift you up above your fellow because you love righteousness and you hate iniquity. You hate fraudulent work in the family, in the school, in the office, in the workplace, in your business. Therefore, the God of your life has anointed you, has lifted you up high above your fellows. Righteousness exalts a man. Righteousness exalts a man. The eyes of the Lord are moving to and fro beholding those who are righteous and he remembers their promotion he remembers the appointed time for their promotion he is watching over them for the appointed time to raise them up so jesus as a man god a more excellent name he got a more excellent anointing why thou lovest righteousness and hates iniquity that's what now who again we we'll talk about Joseph. We we'll talk about Joseph. See the life of Joseph. This strength of life. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind it around you. Because divine promotion, divine upliftment, divine success, divine greatness is coming on your way. The Lord will surely reward you. Look at it in Genesis chapter 37. I read verse 3. Genesis chapter 37, verse 3. Now, Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. And he met him a court of many colors. Verse 4. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. But then, why did the father love him? Because I'm telling you, righteousness attracts favor, even of me, even of your officers. Even of your leaders, even of, of it attracts them all for, from your parents over you. Look at it in verse 1 of Genesis 37. 
verse 1 and 2 and Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan these are the generations of Jacob Joseph being 17 years old was feeding the flock with his father and she and the Lord was with the sons of Bilhah and with the sons of Zilpah his father's wives and Joseph brought unto his father their evil report thou lovest righteousness and hatest iniquity can you see your, this, my brethren are not behaving well the way I saw them pursuing a girl father if you don't talk anything shame is coming to this house the way I saw this one the way they, want, they will lead one man, the way I saw them attacking a man to remove money from him. If you don't do anything, if you leave these people alone, we will have a bad name and they will kill them. They, you, will lose, you will lose your children. So he hates iniquity, Joseph. Hates, hated iniquity. God saw it. Now some of you, we expect you to do likewise. The evils they are bringing to the unit meetings, Evil coming to the chapter meetings. Evil coming to the whole state, whole nation. You're sitting down there in evil. Can you be sitting in a house and the whole house, rain is falling from everywhere. You will not run. You will not look for safety. How do you sit, sit there and you're not asking, how do we amend this place? Because the place is not comfortable. The place is not comfortable. Our house is, our roof is leaking. This one is happening like that. Evil is going on and you're keeping quiet. Do you really love the Lord? In fact, do you hate evil? That you're compromising with the evil man. You're covering, with the, covering the evil man. Joseph revealed the evil of his brethren. I'm talking about what gave this man favor. In Genesis 39 verse 4. Genesis 39 verse 4. And Joseph found grace in his side. And he served him, and he made him overseer over his house, and all that he had, he put in his hand. Favor follows the righteous man. Favor follows the holy child. You, favor will follow you. Kindness will follow you. As long as you practice this righteousness, you obey the Lord. You do the biddings of the Lord. Forget whatever persecution you pass through. Favor of God. So shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God. And God will cause man to also show it to you. Hallelujah. See, he was sold to Egypt as persecution. He, fought, he dropped in the house of a man. God had prepared for favor. Because God had chosen to favor him. Now, temptation again came to the house of that man through, and came to Joseph through the woman. That, jo, that uh, the woman, the wife of Potiphar. See it, verse 11. And uh, let's read from verse. Uh, uh, verse 7 and it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph and she said lie with me but he refused and said unto his master's wife behold my master what did not what is with me in the house and he had committed all that he had to my hand there's none greater in this house than I Neither had he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. See, how will, he, will Joseph not love his master? The master loved him. The master blessed him. The master upgraded him and left all these things in his hand and so happy with him, so peaceful with him, he should go in and embarrass his master by sleeping with the wife. Go and downgrade the master, despise his master. I just wickedness. Besides, he personally loved God. Let not mercy and truth 
forsake you. He personally loved God. How can I do this wickedness and sin against God? Favor will follow that man. If you are here, your life is this life of righteousness. Your life is this life of the fear of God. May divine favor follow you. But they cast Joseph into prison. They threw Joseph into prison. And just in prison, and look at it in verse 20. Genesis 39 from verse 20 to 23. And Joseph's master took him as a result of the false accusation and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound. And he was there in the prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph, to Joseph's hand, all the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatsoever he did, he, he was the doer of it. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his favor, because everybody, the Lord was with him. And that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. Say amen. amen. That's it. Favor and good understanding. In the sight of God and man. Don't mind that you are failing in school because you, you couldn't cheat like others. Favor, divine. And good understanding from heaven. Whether you come up from out of that school as a failure, favor shall find you somewhere. Favor shall find you somewhere. God will open doors for your life. Hallelujah. Righteousness must be rewarded. Righteousness must be rewarded. Favor followed Joseph. Now, see it again in chapter 41. Verse 38 to 41, the climax of favor over Joseph. Chapter 40, 41, verse 38. Now the Bible says, Pharaoh, Pharaoh's servants said on Pharaoh's, Pharaoh and his servants. I mean, Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is? A man in whom the Spirit of God is. Joseph in prison is now standing in the, in, in the presence of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Joseph had been called out of prison. Bury the truth, it shall rise after three days. Let them say they will frustrate you, you shall rise. Let them say they will fail you, you shall rise. Let them say you will, they will kill you. You shall rise. Because righteousness delivered from death. Righteousness delivered from the prison. Righteousness delivered from frustration. You will come out alive. That is it. Because the Lord is the owner of this world. He is the eternal God. And righteousness has kept him going. That is it, my brother. And now, see him before Pharaoh. And Pharaoh looked at Joseph. This man is trained. He is superior to every other citizen of Egypt. Joseph was greater than Potiphar. Can we find such a man as this man is? Why? Because the spirit of God is in him. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God had showed this unto thee, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according to, my, according to thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, 
I have set thee over all the all the land of Egypt. Can you clap hand? Can you clap hand? Can you clap hand? Can you clap hand? Clap that hand for Jesus. Clap that hand for Jesus. Promotion is coming. 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 Promotion. You'll be lifted up. You'll be lifted up. Promotion is coming. Your future is bright. Your future is bright. Your future is glorious. Your future is glorious. You will go to the throne. You will go to the throne. You will go to the throne. Hallelujah! Wisdom invites the youth. Here I will speak of excellent things. My ways shall speak of excellent things. They shall be the ways of truth. Lie is not in my mouth. What people call success, I have prince, I have my way. That creator is saying, I'm looking for people to follow my way. Now, what about Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? In Daniel chapter 1. Daniel chapter 1. See, see the commitment of these people to righteousness. Because they refused the dentists of the king Nebuchadnezzar. Wow! They were first sac at sacrifice to idols. And then they were brought to them who were students as to eat things along with idols. Daniel, Meshach, and Abednego said no. Look at it in verse 8 of Daniel chapter 1. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat. No, with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuch that he might not defile himself. Now, God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. Can you see righteousness and favor? righteousness and favor who brought the favor God brought Daniel if you if you are doing righteousness and a particular man is hating you God disdains that man and doesn't want to use him in your life otherwise if God wants to use him he will give, make that man love you he will make that woman accept you it's God that will touch the heart of people. If a man's way pleases the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. That's it. That's it. Now, verse 10. And the prince of the eunuch said unto Daniel, I fear my Lord the king, who had appointed your meal, your meat, and your drink? For where should he see your faces worse liking than the children which are of your sword? Then shall ye make me in danger my head to the king. Then said Daniel to Bilza, whom the prince of the eunuchs had said over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, prove thy servants. I beseech thee ten days and let them give us pools to eat and water to drink. Then let our countenances look, be looked upon before thee and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat. As thou seest, thou deal thou with thy servants. So he consented to them in this matter and proved them. 10 days and at the end of 10 days their countenances appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat who told you that God does not back up righteousness you are taking a risky life because of righteousness the Lord shall sponsor that risk I said the Lord shall sponsor that risk you will come out and you will never die. That risk you are taking, take it. God will be there. He will justify you. 
and you will not be ashamed. Then Mirza took away the portion of meat, of, of their meat, and the wine that they should drink, and gave them pause. As for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. God, God is waiting for you. What did I say? What did I say? Your story is like the story of the 40 people that were arrested in the communist country at communist time, at communism time. And they were torturing them because they were believers. And they started dying one by one. Anytime one was to die, an angel came with a crown and waited for his death and crowned him and took his soul to heaven. And it, it, it continued. It continued until the 40th man remained. The angel had come down with a crown. Well, they were asking him, deny him now. Deny him now. But you won't be like that 40th man. Because he disappointed God. He couldn't eventually wear that crown. Because he looked left and looked right. They asked him, what benefit will you have in Jesus? See, the others have died. What benefit? Deny him, we will make you great. Hey, he said, now I have put away Jesus. Hey, a security man that was there, God opened the eyes of the security man and he came. Um, the security man saw hey, that any time an, a man was to die, an angel came with a crown. So the security man saw the angel that had come for this man to crown him and saw that the angel got disappointed was turning to go back he cried out hey i accept jesus i accept jesus crown me i mean kill me kill me i don't want the crown to go god wants to crown you for righteousness temptation to immorality is your problem god wants to crown you in righteousness fraudulent certificate is your problem God wants to crown you in righteousness. A lying leap. They tempted you to tell lies. And you are not standing. The crown is going away. Somebody must rise up for this crown. Somebody must take over. If you don't repay that crown, somebody will take it over from you. You thought that your righteousness was in vain? You thought that there was no promotion in righteousness? You thought that there was no glory in righteousness? You thought that there was no blessing in righteousness? That you think that, hey, what am I gaining? By the way, I've not married. By the way, I've not, by the way, I've not got a job. By the way, let me go. Let me go. You don't know what is waiting for you. The light affliction that you are facing is just for a moment. And he's speaking of the great glory that shall take over. A great glory. A great glory. The Lord is looking for people to anoint for end time. The Lord is training people. Whatever hardship you're going through, you're writing examination. I wish that you pass that exam. I'm looking for people to come and join me in this walk. I'm looking for people to receive anointing of the end time. The anointing of the end time. The Lord wants to pour anointing of the end time. He wants to pour it upon your life. He wants to pour it upon your life. The Lord is looking for men and women. Youth, God is calling. God is calling. The last example is a man known as Pastor Paul Rica. This man. <laughs> hallelujah! I say hallelujah! He grew up in his youth with the fear of God. He loved the Lord. He was not a ruffian. He accept, when he accepted Jesus, he was sincere, committed, and served the Lord every day in righteousness and holiness. Every day, lying lips were strange to him. He didn't know it. 
immorality was far in fact since he was born he never committed immorality with any person except his wife when he married so he didn't know those things he loved the Lord he served the Lord he gave himself to the Lord he was passionate about Jesus oh he loved him he loved humanity his heart was open to humanity his heart was open to love mankind to serve mankind he had the passion for Jesus he passionately loved God tempted in every way he was found faithful therefore the Lord said I have found a man for the end time <laughs> hallelujah 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 the Lord says I have found my representative upon the earth. I will use you. I will bless you. I will make your name great. You will do more greatly than your mentors. I will raise you up more than your mentors. I am going to, I, I give you the world. I open the nations of the world to you. Yes, go, my son, carry me around the world. And that's what is going. I've given you the people. I've opened the door for you. Revival of end time. Revival of end time. Revival of end time. Revival of end time. I'll put it in your heart. Go and prosper. Go and prosper. And that's what is happening now. 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 And that man, I heard him say, Where will I find my children? Where will I find children after my passion? Children that anointing shall fall upon him. Tonight I'm seeing people gathered before him. I am seeing people gathered before him. Are they people ready for the mantle? Are they children ready for the mantle? Mantle of righteousness. Mantle of glory. Mantle of power. Mantle of anointing. End time revival. End time revival. Let the anointing come. Let the anointing come. Let the power follow you. Let the power follow you. Let the glory follow you. Let the anointing follow you. Let grace follow you. Let the Lord anoint you. Everybody let the Lord anoint you. Let us walk together. End time revival. The devil must be pulled down. Nation to nation. Tribe to tribe. Kingdom to kingdom. The Lord Jesus must be the Lord. He must regain his throne in the world. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Open your mouth and begin to say, Lord, I'm here. I want to, I want to be his child. I want to be his child. I want to, oh Lord, remember me. Oh God, remember me. Open your mouth and, breathe, and let the Lord pour anointing. Let the Lord pour grace. 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 Grace.
Jesus name we pray the message you have just listened to is a production of holiness revival movement worldwide holiness revival movement worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3900. Four eight O zero eight zero five six eight three four three two three. You can also reach us through our email address Holiness Revival Movement at Gmail dot com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my
I believe in you. Believe you are the living Savior. Jesus, I believe in you. I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. You Lord. are my Lord and Savior. Savior. Jesus, I believe. 